everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are gonna dye a fun chain ply yarn. This yarn is the Vitalana Ascendance Yarn in Limestone from Knit Crate. It is a sport weight yarn that is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. This yarn was featured in the February 2022 Knit and Crochet Club from Knit Crate, and we're gonna be over dyeing it today. I say over dyeing in quotes because it is a white yarn. It's a completely blank canvas. So you could do pretty much any technique you wanted to transform this from a white yarn into something more colorful. And on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, I have hundreds and hundreds of dyeing videos that you could reference to create the colorway that you want. This video is not sponsored. I am a Knit Crate affiliate and Knit Crate actually offered to send me some of this colorway for free so I could play around with it. And I'm very excited to dye this up, especially because the chain ply construction is not something I have dyed a lot of. And I'm curious how it'll look once I transform it from white to something that has a bit more color. But if you didn't end up with a white version of this yarn and you want to transform it, you can over dye something that already has color in it. I also have a whole playlist of over dyeing yarn where I take yarn that has a commercial colorway already and transform it into something else, even if I liked the original color. <laughs> I added on some removable nylon zip ties onto the yarn just to make it easy for me to flip during the dyeing process. And I pre-soaked the yarn for a couple of hours in just some plain tap water with no acid. We are going to use some commercial acid dyes today to dye this yarn a sort of vintage spring colorway. We'll see how much dye we end up adding. But the colors I selected are Dharma Acid Dyes in Delphinium Blue, Moss Green, and Antique Mauve. Since I'm using commercial dyes, all of the tools and equipment I will be using are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are not used for the preparation of food. And whenever I am using the dry dye powders, I will be wearing a deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. If you do not have commercial dye equipment and would like to transform some of your Knit Crate yarn, you can absolutely use food coloring and vinegar or Kool-Aid. I have a lot of videos on that on my channel. And even if the yarn base is different than this one, since this is a white base, a lot of the other techniques that I've done on non-superwash yarn will translate probably really, really well to this base. I've added our 200 grams of yarn to my four inch deep full size catering steam pan. And I wanna add enough water. Let's see, I've added about four cups so far. I wanna add enough water so that way I can have the yarn a little bit spread out in here and have water still at the edges so that way when we heat things up, we don't uh, risk burning the yarn at all. So with the four cups, if I move the yarn to the side, there's not very much water there. And so that's why I will want some more. This is a very fluffy, fluffy yarn. It's also not super wash. Yeah. Let's go ahead and add all eight cups and go for it. Non-superwash yarn does absorb color a little bit slower than superwash, um, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. And there's now enough water in here that if I move the yarn to the side, we do see liquid here. That's what I like to see. And yeah, we still have, the yarn itself is on the surface, but I'm so curious of what the colors will do. We do need acid. And so I'm gonna add one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar here in the pan and gently press and not rub to just mix that up a little bit. And now we're gonna turn on the heat and wait for things to get a bit steamy so we can add on the dye. And I'll go put on my respirator mask, safety glasses and gloves as I mentioned earlier. Since I'm gonna apply the dry powder to the yarn, I will get dye on my gloved fingertips. I have a skein of Nitpick Stroll that I pre-soaked in water with vinegar to use as a mop to wipe that excess dye off of my fingers onto the skein for a fun, random kind of colorway. All right, let's start with our moss green. This is a very, very pretty color 
that breaks into a few different hues. And that's because these are pre-mixed colors. And so, I mean, you can even see maybe some yellow dots in there. And so there are different colors of pigments in here. And what I haven't decided is if I want to speckle the colors on and not touch it like this, but I have a feeling I'm probably gonna touch it or not. And so that is always a debate, but with this, maybe at first I'll let it go so then we can see the colors within each thing. But in there you can see some pops of red even from this beautiful, more muted green color. There, if I zoom in, you can see some of those reds that help bring the green down from the brightness. All right, next up, I'm gonna do the Delphinium Blue. And I have a feeling I'm gonna want, I've been going back and forth, but I wanna do a lot of green with some pops of the Delphinium Blue. And look at all of the pink that is in there. It does turn, the blues really pop, I think, with heat. Otherwise, it can look like a little bit more purpley, but it's another broken colorway. Ooh, I'll zoom in there in a moment. But first, over here, I'll do some of the antique mauve, which I don't remember if this one breaks or not, but we will see. The delphinium blue breaks into, a, I'm not sure if it's a few, but different blue and red pigments. The Antique Mauve maybe has a few different pink pigments in there, but what I'm seeing here is not as dramatic breaking-wise as what we see with the other colors. And so I'm not exactly aiming for a speckled colorway today, but I like the way that the colors are streaking through. So I think I may lean into that a little bit. And we'll do slightly different color placement and things when we flip the yarn over. But for now, for this first layer at least, I don't think I'm going to mess with where the colors are located. The one thing I do care a lot about during this process is that when my gloved fingertips go back into the dye container is that they are completely dry because I do not want to introduce moisture into the dye container that could result in some clumping which would eventually make me a little bit sad so there we go it's a little bit of the dithonium blue down there and then i'm going to come add a lot more moss now if this yarn were super wash i would expect the colors would be striking a lot faster on the yarn and that we might be able to see little specks of color uh, from doing things this way. And some of these pigments may strike pretty quickly, and so we may still see some tiny specks of color, but the colors that have been on here longer are spreading more. And so since I've never dyed this yarn base and I don't have as much experience with bases with this construction, I'm curious to see how it'll spread and what it's going to look like once we flip things over. Because we will be layering more and more dye onto this yarn as time goes on. I don't expect there to be a ton of white left over, but I just want to see how this color is going to behave. And as time goes on, depending on how much things blend, we may want to help things along with a spoon. But for now, I want this to sit for 10 minutes to see what happens. Because with the delphinium blue, I'm seeing those colors spread and sort of bring in all those different color pigments a fair amount already uh, because that was some of the first dye we added. So we'll see what happens. And if things are going to spread a lot, then it may not matter as much if we're going to help it. But I'm just curious what we'll see. Let's flip our yarn. And I'm really, really curious to see how much, if at all, colors spread and you can see some amount of color spread on here we see some pinks that came all the way through some yellowish green hues that came all the way through 
and that is really, really fun. So as we add more colors, the colors will blend uh, more than what we've seen already, where they were smaller sort of pops of color, because what's happening here will happen on the other side of the yarn. So I'm gonna put my respirator back on, and we're gonna add more color on here. I followed a similar type of pattern that I used on the first side, lightly speckling the dry powder onto the yarn and not touching it, but using more moss green than the other two colors. This time, instead of lines, I added the delphinium blue and antique mauve a little bit more randomly placed over the yarn. And then when I was satisfied with the color coverage, I waited 10 minutes before moving the yarn to expose other large white patches to add more color onto the yarn. I've definitely ended up with a specular feel than I think initially I was planning on going for. But I think that I'm now fairly satisfied with the coverage. This feels very impressionistic to me and is absolutely a transformation from what this colorway was before. So I just flipped it so that way we can make sure all of the dye is very like wet. But now I'm gonna heat this for 20 more minutes so we will have had a total of 30 minutes after I last added dye. Yeah, and so I'll come back once the timer goes off. And our yarn mop is steaming in a steamer basket for at least 30 minutes to set that color. And now that our 20 minutes are up, I turned off the heat. We are still steamy, but I think like the color has been absorbing pretty well. And I'm gonna go ahead and let the yarn cool off in the pan so we can wash it when it is completely cooled. Let's wash all the yarn together. The romantic speckles we got on the chain paw yarn are amazing. Absolutely amazing, and I am thrilled. I do want to be careful while washing to not felt anything, but so far I'm not seeing any bleeding. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of some clear dish soap. Let's see. I have a feeling we're pretty good. We didn't use that much pigment. And so, oh, I am thrilled. And I'm seeing no color bleeding. So I'm gonna rinse out the soap and then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer to remove some of the liquid and hang it up to dry. So we can come back and take a closer look at the yarn. Originally, I was not planning on trying to dye speckles, but I'm so glad I did. This colorway is so floral and romantic. It feels like an impressionistic painting. And I'm so excited I have more of this base to dye up. Now, as far as speckles go, this will knit up in a very speckly way because you have very short sections of color on here. But there aren't very many super, super sharp speckles. Like in a lot of cases, the colors are more blown out. And we do have some sections of white as well. Now, you may also notice that the yarn is a little bit grippy to itself. Uh, it would still be able to wind into a yarn cake really easily, but because the plies are so lofty, uh, I think that there's not really very many ways to dye it without it sticking to itself a little bit. This was not the case before I dyed it, so this is something that happened during the dyeing process, and I'm sure I could be even more careful to try to avoid it, but there are some yard bases that I know of that are just a little bit grippier. And so that actually would make this base really, really good for color work because the stitches would sort of hold themselves well next to each other. Sometimes the yarn mop steals the show. Even if I really love a colorway, the contrast and seeing all of the colors that I used a little bit more individually, a little bit less blended than they might be on the colorway is fun to see. However, while I like this yarn mop a lot, it just doesn't hold a candle to this chain ply non-superwash yarn. This colorway is something I am so unbelievably proud of. 
I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I would like to thank Knit Crate for sending me this yarn for free to quote, over dye. It's really hard to call something over dyeing when it's such a gorgeous blank canvas like we had today. But the techniques that I did in this video and a lot of my other videos still work even if the yarn you're starting with is not white. If the tone of the original yarn is a little bit deeper, if it's medium to dark tone, then it'll be a lot harder to shift than if it is pastel or white. But it is still possible. You just might have more of the character of the already dyed color showing through. If you would like to see more videos of me over dyeing different types of colorways to transform them, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you would like to learn more about Knit Crate's Knit and Crochet Club or Sock Knit and Crochet Club, I will have my affiliate link to that down in the video description. And you can save 20% off your first month if you're a new Knit Crate subscriber using the code CHEMNITS20. Sometimes when you consider over dyeing yarn, you might feel a little bit guilty because originally someone had a vision of a colorway. But ultimately, if over dyeing the yarn means that you're going to enjoy the colorway more, if it means that you're more likely to use the yarn and turn it into something versus allowing it to hang out in your stash for a while, then it's the right thing to do because it's your yarn and you're the one who's going to transform it into something amazing. Please make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I post every Tuesday and Friday morning with lots of other bonus content thrown in around there. Thank you so much for watching.